All right, y'all, what is going on? Welcome back to another Power Stroke Rick video here. And uh, we got the dirty, salty 1767 in the garage with the hood up. So you already know something's going down. That box right there, SPE Motorsport. So I'm gonna show you what we got, what we're putting on the truck. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna walk you through everything. This is a full install video on their fuel filter system for the 17 and up 6.7 Power Strokes. So yeah, guys, we're gonna get right to it. stroke and rick garage it is like 60 degrees outside 50 degrees outside and it is almost new year's so you already know we're working in the garage what we got today is the spe motorsport fuel filter system upgrade so right off the bat right off the rip i'm showing you guys this so what you got here is your cat 1r0749 fuel filter this guy right here and then you got your water separator, which is a 256 8753 filter. And what SPE did here is they got this full billet aluminum housing that's basically gonna go slide up into where your old under the truck, is it the water separator? Your water separator is. Fuel filter in the engine bay, we're getting rid of that, cutting her out. So basically this is an install video on this new product. Um, I don't know where the camera's at, if you guys can see this up close, but everything's labeled. You got fuel filter, separator, pre-chamber, which we'll, we'll be reusing our sensor out of the old water separator filter underneath the tank. Uh, we got your fuel water separator filter right here. These three lines, they're all labeled, coming off above where the system is right now. Basically, we're going to reuse these and then... These two, we're gonna run two lines off the return lines, basically coming back from the filter in the engine bay where that was. And then this is a factory line as well. And fitting plug right here. This is for the long bed. This is for the short bed, this location of this uh, quick connect fitting. So yeah, this is just a look. Look at that, man. It's like a sore dick, you can't beat it. SPE, all labeled, fancy. And we're gonna take these filters off to install them just to make it easier to get up there to see what we're doing. You got your drain right here, a new drain valve provider. There's a drain here as well for the water separator. So that's the first thing right there, guys. Second is this, basically it's all built aluminum, SPE. It's basically a manifold block. So this will be going in the engine bay where that filter, the fuel filter is in the engine bay, which those are prone for cracking, when you replace them, they make a mess. I mean, you're pulling the quick connect lines off. Usually you get fuel somewhere in the engine bay. We don't want that. So basically this is provided a six millimeter Allen bolt. And we're basically gonna bolt this in the same location in the engine bay. Put your three lines on it. Boom, good to go. It's got AN fittings on each side in case you wanna put like a gauge on it. If you got uh, dual fueler setups, um, anything you guys wanna monitor. So this is going in the engine bay. That's it. And this is all no cutting. This is all just plug and play pretty much. So what we also have here is we got four quick connect fittings. So these are the two lines we're gonna make up that run from the main filter in the engine bay. So we got some half inch hose, uh, 250 PSI rated, and we're gonna cut pretty much two, three foot sections out of this. And we're gonna make up the two lines that we need. And most of these, no clamps, they're all barb fittings, so they're all push to fit, quick, quick connect fittings. So that is what we have right here in the engine, the engine bed, on the toolbox. And I'm gonna show you. All right guys, so here's a better look at uh, everything we got here. I mean, here's all the labels I was telling you guys about. I mean, this is like a Sword Johnson, man. You can't beat it. I mean, look at this, SPE. We're gonna show you how to do all this, which lines go where. 
everything's pretty much plug and play. So the only thing we do have to make up is we'll, we'll not make up, but we'll take the, the whip, the whiff sensor. We'll take that out of the fuel water separator filter underneath, put that back in here, reuse the OEM one. We'll show you putting this in the engine bay and we'll show you cutting the hose and putting these fittings on. So yeah, guys, we already started. Um, first, we're going to just dis disconnect both negatives on the battery terminals. You're going to want to do that just in case. So we're starting with that. And then underneath, we already started. This little plastic cover is just in front of where your uh, filter is underneath. And all it is is just some some of these tree connectors or these push pin connectors. And there's just three of them. So I just take them out, pop them out right here. That's the first thing. So we'll get under here and we'll show you what we're operating with right now. All right, y'all. So there's that cover that I already showed you taken off. There's one plug here, tree connector, and there's two that go to the side. So this is what we're left with, right? So this is that SPE uh, drain valve that I put on, which I will not be reusing, which it's all right. But this is the sensor that we're going to be reusing right here. And we're not taking this out. We're not. We're just going to unplug it. So this is just a push connection. You just push here and pull. Not too hard, but we're going to leave that because we'll be reusing that. We're going to drop this whole housing down and undo the lines all on the top. So you got a T30 Torx right in there. That's it, guys. This is how this bolts up. So we're going to show you removing this. All right, guys. So I'm trying to get as best as I can. I know we're crammed under here, but there's the T30 Torx. So we take that out. And then this, see how it's all loose? All you do back here is you basically push up on this, and then it comes out. If you can see back there, there's little tabs. It just hangs on that plastic right there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect those lines and we're gonna disconnect that line and there should be, I think there's another one up there too. So we're gonna disconnect all the lines and drop this down pretty much. Before you do it, before you disconnect these lines, spray everything with brake clean, and which I already did. So those are all spray with brake clean. You want no debris getting in there. Um, especially me living in Ohio, that's all the fluid film right there. So I had to clean all these up. And yeah, we're gonna take the lines off and drop this thing down all right guys so here is the water separator drop down so i showed you the torx array that goes back there you slide it out so you got one two three four fuel lines right here so these ones up top they're all the same connected wise you pull this tab out on top and then the back over here you push down on it and pull out just a quick connect so kind of like this you lift this tab up if I can get it with one hand, let's see. Oh, I can't get it. There you go. You lift that tab up, and then on the back, you're just gonna push down right here and then pull off. And all these are in the instructions that SPE provides, but here's four fuel lines right here. Here is this dismounted. So we're gonna clean all this stuff. We're going to mount the new one. We're gonna take this sensor out, put that in there, and yeah, we'll, we'll keep on trucking along, show you how we're operating here. All right, guys, so here is the whiff sensor put back in. This is, I'm gonna let you know, this is probably the trickiest part that I found. So the old housing right here, there's gonna be a tab here and a tab here. If you look, it's kind of like ridged. You wanna turn this to the left clockwise all the way, so the sensor will be right here. So you wanna turn it all the way this way, so it's facing this way. Basically, it's, it's a little hard to get out. It's definitely a tight fit. It's a double O-ring, two blue O-rings on it. And I basically just carefully took two flat blades right here on the ends and just kind of like shimmied it out very slowly without breaking it. And then putting it back into the housing, you want it facing this way per SPE's directions. Same thing, you kind of just put it in this way for the connector facing this way, push it down, shimmy it down, make sure it only goes in one way. It lines up with the tabs in there and then you twist it this way and you're good to go. So. We're gonna slap this on the truck, put all the lines back on, and then we'll show you. We already cut, we got my nice little handy dandy tape measure. We cut these guys to around three feet. So we're gonna make the fittings up and we're gonna put all this back together and then put this up with the Torx bit T30. So, yep. All right, guys, so here is the housing mounted up. Got the Torx bit back in, sensors plugged in. This line right here is quick connected. The three, let's see if I can show you up here, the three lines up here, they go on the same area that they 
came in off the old one, the OEM one. And now we're gonna make up the two lines coming off of here to run to the top. So we're gonna make them lines up and put the filters on and then we'll head to the engine bay. All right guys, so when doing these fittings, they let you know that it is a very tight fit and they are not lying. So a little trick for you, get a cup of scolding hot water, put this hose in there, leave it in there for about at least a minute or two. Let it get really hot, lubricate the fittings. I put a little bit of diesel fuel on it and then we're just gonna shove it right on. So this one's on, this one's on. This one, it might have to get redone. Can't, couldn't, couldn't get it on there all the way. So we might have to trim that a little bit, but we cut both hoses to three foot. So, yep, got that sitting, chilling. All right, guys, so here's our first line installed right here. So we're taking this factory line off right here, this quick connect. We're putting the male fitting in and we're routing it up and we got it above the fuel tank, just hanging out up there. Make sure there's no kinks or nothing like that. And then we route it to the outer end of the fuel filter right there. So now the other one, we're gonna take it to this side coming from the engine bay. This one's coming from the tank side. So this one from the engine bay, we're gonna run it up and then we're gonna go to this quick connect. Where's it at? Right in there, it's, in, it's behind this line, you can't see it. But we're gonna do that first. So yeah, bam. Guys, this looks awesome. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is very cool. So both filters I put on, fuel water separator labeled, uh, fuel filter labeled. I did lubricate the O-rings on top and then I just put them both hand tight, um, as tight as you can get them. And yeah, guys, so here's the, uh, the factory line, this part and this part that we disconnected. So this part, you guys saw me, this is the first one, the yellow connector. You put the male end in, wrap it above the tank. It goes to the outer fitting on this, uh, aluminum housing now the one coming from the the truck side so i guess that's the tank side this is from the fuel filter side up there um which is going to go into that block this guy is a female one you pop on here route it the same way and it goes to the connector right up there you can see where that is right there so as you can see they're just laying above the tank just make sure none of the lines are kinked we don't want none of that and yeah this is how it's looking guys this is looking awesome um make sure this drain valve right here is tight clockwise connectors back on make sure this is tight yeah the torque is back in and everything is looking awesome so we're gonna head to the engine bay put the manifold in and then we're gonna try and pressurize the system and test for leaks we'll see what we're working with guys all right guys so i'm gonna go get some rags but we are disconnecting these lines this red guy you just pinch push down this guy, I forget how the hell this one goes, but we're sure as shit gonna figure it out if my memory can remember. Okay, so I just pull that up and that should be it. That guy should just pull off. This guy, there's a tab on the bottom and a blue tab right there. And we should just be able to push this guy. See if she wants to cooperate. Yep, there we go. So we're gonna slap these lines off and we're gonna Take the whole filter and the housing out. So we'll get some rags real quick. All right, guys. So all three of these lines are off. This one, you saw me pull it up and then you pinch in here, then pull it off. This guy, tabs, that guy, it's pull off. So now we're going to try and get this <laughs> fuel filter out without making a mess, hopefully. Possibly. No guarantees. No promises here. So this guy just, I mean, you guys should all know how to do this she just slides or well, she turns i'm sorry not slides uh i'm already leaking some fuel on my crankcase vent we don't want that we don't want no leakers yep just like so and we'll lift her out of here as she's leaking on us this is why it gets messy here, guys. All right. All right, guys. So this is honestly about like a half hour later. I wish I could say this was easy, but it was not. This was the hardest one to get out. Just this housing alone, which is all right there. No, I didn't take the hot side or I didn't take any pipes off or nothing. But the pain in the ass one was one, this guy back here. Luckily, I was able to use this new snap-on ratchet that I got to where 
you pop this. I can't show you. I'm not left-handed. Let me see. You pop this. Well, anyway, you could swivel the head like as wherever to wherever you want it. Quarter inch, eight millimeter. So that was to get that back one. This front one, which was, don't do that, which was right underneath them fuel lines, right down below there. So basically I'd used a eight millimeter ratchet wrench to get it started getting out. And then the rest were with my fat fingers, which that kind of sucked. So I wish I had a flex head eight millimeter. That probably would have helped ratcheting a little bit more, but yeah, so we're gonna install the manifold block now. And this sucked, this did, but this ratchet definitely came in handy. And luckily eight millimeter ratchet wrench. All right, guys, so this block, the manifold block is officially installed. So you just reuse the three quick connect positions in the same position they were, and then down in there, a little six millimeter Allen tightened up. And yeah, guys, so now we're gonna reconnect the batteries and start priming the system, see what kind of, see what kind of configurations we got here. Guys, so I think so far, we're on the first prime. I'm not seeing no leaks up here. Ooh, excuse my chair. Let's, uh, let's do it again. We're gonna prime it a lot, guys. Hear the pump kick on down here. Well, not the pump, but is there pumping? You guys hear them filling up? Let's go, bro. I'm ready to go. All right, guys. Nothing, nothing leaking there, we're all good. Under here, we are looking all good. Everything up top is dry. Look at that. All right, guys, we are in the test facility route right now. And uh, as you see, we got no lights. No low fuel pressure, nothing like that. I've been monitoring my Easy Link this whole time. I mean, now I'm filming right now, so I'm not watching it. But uh, so far, so good. I'm below temps in the trans. I'm only at like 90 some degrees, and I'm a little below on everything else, so I'm not really romping on it. But it's not skipping a beat. It's not hiccuping. Nothing. I mean, there's nothing going on here. So go around this corner. Give her a little bit of a little bit of pepper. We don't really want to beat on it too much, you know, we're just cruising. But yeah, guys, I'm not having no issues at all. It's running smooth. Let's see if we can get a little bit of, a little bit of black clouds coming out here. All right, guys, so we're basically ending this video, but what I gotta do is I just gotta get one more shot of that, man. I mean, look how good that looks. You can see a little pokey poke from laying underneath. Look at that, man, that is like a sore dick. Can't beat it. So, yeah. Anyway, this is all the parts you're gonna have left, guys. The whole water separator, filter housing, fuel filter from the engine bay, bracket for this thing that goes around here, and in the bottom, there's the bracket for that. So, yep, leftover parts. All right, guys. So this is it on the uh, full install of the SPE fuel filter system. Um, basically, a long story short for you guys. Where did I start? Took the water separator housing out. Disconnected all the lines. Now, when you guys order anything from SPE, they'll have an online instruction list. And it shows you even how to get the quick connects off like I showed you shows you what to do here, what to do there. So we started with all that. We took the filters off the new billet aluminum housing. We put that up, we connected the lines all back together. And then you guys saw, we put the filters back on, the, the whiff sensor, that was the crucial part for me. That was probably the one I challenged the most, I was the most challenged with was that double O-ring, just getting that out without breaking it. It's all plastic without breaking it. So. Be careful pulling that whiff sensor out. Um, 
once that was all good, making up the new hoses, I hope that helped you guys. Try to get scolding hot water, like that you make tea with or whatever, and stick that hose in there for about a minute or two. It expands. I lubricated the fittings a little bit with diesel fuel, and then boom, just shoved it right on there. So they are a pain in the ass. They are very tight fit. And then the hardest, the other hardest part was getting that filter housing out of the engine bay. Holy shit, man. God damn. Showed you guys that snap-on ratchet I got, which is this guy right here. So what I was trying to show you earlier is you push this button and it goes all around 360. So I was basically able to hit it right here and bam, I was able to get the back one out. The two that are closest to you, not a big deal. There's four total, eight millimeters. So after getting that three of them out, the worst one was that one that was underneath the hard hard plumbed fuel lines run into the fuel pump. Those were hard. That was a bitch. Like I said, I wish I had a eight millimeter flex head ratchet, but luckily I had the eight millimeter ratchet and I had my dick beaters in there, man. And I was twisting and I was twisting and fucking twisting, but got it out. Just be patient. Don't break nothing. Don't rip nothing. And then once you got that housing out, that was the cut and dry job right there. I mean, you put the new manifold block on, you put all three lines into it. Boom, you're done. So I don't remember if I filmed it or not, but prime in the truck. Um, once everything's done, connect the batteries back up again and then prime in it. Turn that key, it's about 30 seconds. Um, they probably say to do it like five to 10 times in a row. I'll sit here for 45 minutes, I don't care. I'll do it 20, 30 times. The more the merrier, you're not hurting nothing. You're just priming the system, you're fill, filling the filter up. Um, so yeah, everything we did there, it started, we took it for a drive. No issues, came back. While we were priming it, check for leaks. Came back, check for leaks, none. This thing is like a sore dick, you can't beat it. Um, thank you to SP family and Chance and everybody for coming up with this and giving me the ability to buy this part from you guys, I appreciate it. Um, another key tip too, so this is only for the 17 and up Super Duties. Um, Hopefully they'll do something eventually with the 11 to 16, like my blue truck. That would be cool. I know you can get the manifold block for that. For now, if you have a uh, like an air dog or a fast setup on it. But hopefully eventually they'll do this full thing for the 11 to 16s as well. That would be cool. And also, if you guys have bought products from SPE, simple thing. They'll send you an email. Go review the product. Let, let them know what you think about it. Put a picture in, you even get 10% off your order. That could be 10% off your new fuel filter system for your 17 and up Super Duty. So again, thanks for stopping by guys. Any questions, drop them down below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. And yeah, hope this uh, helps you. Hope you guys like this. I think this is an awesome kit. I mean, it's plug and play. Worst case, if anything bad happened, I would just put the old setup back on. I mean, obviously nothing bad happened, but you're not cutting stuff. You're not, you're not permanently installing something. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Peace. One last thing, guys. Sorry I'm talking so much, but I'm just trying to help you guys make an awesome purchase like this from SPE. I don't know too much of the technical terms on how this is very, not very, how this is better than the OEM. I do know a little bit. And when I say I don't know a lot, I mean, I don't know the full nitty gritty like Dan and everybody at SPE does. So SPE has a website or a video on their YouTube channel with Dan completely explaining everything. I mean, these cat filters to what they're rated for is huge farm equipment, huge semi stuff. And we got a V867 power stroke. So I do know that fuel filter itself is like 325 gallons per hour it can pump. And I think the OEM one was like 125. So I mean, that's I'm not good at math, but I think that's like more than double right there. Um, the manifold block up top, no mess. You don't gotta worry about them housings cracking on the OEM fuel filters that are all plastic up top. That's a plus too. I mean, the, the list goes on. So the more you look into it, the more you'll realize that it's an awesome option to buy. So if you do have any questions, drop a comment below, contact SPE, contact me. Um, I think what I'm gonna be doing is, uh, I'll show it in the next clip, the fuel filter drain valve I have 
through SPE, the billet aluminum one for this 2017 power stroke. I am gonna give it away to one of you at a thousand subscribers because I don't need it anymore. I don't. It's usually, I think it's like around 60, 70 bucks on their website. Thousand subscribers, I'll give it away to one of you guys. Obviously you've seen the new one comes with the new pickcock drain, so I don't need it. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks guys. All right guys, here's a little, little drain valve right there. So if you guys want this, thousand subscribers, if you got a 2017 and up, I'll give this away to one of you. I'll do a little raffle or something. So thanks again guys. Peace.